I'm here with legendary poker champion, Doyle Brunson. And I'm here with one of my oldest and dearest friends, the mad genius of poker himself, Mike Carroll. And we're here for the I Amplify Poker University to present freshman, sophomore, junior, senior courses taking you from where you are right now into big profit of the big games. Welcome to I Amplify Poker University, the freshman course. Doyle says something that is monumentally important in poker, and if you don't understand it, you're going to go broke. It's about poker and whether or not it's a game of people. Is it? Yes, poker is about people. There's no magical formula that's the correct way to play, regardless of what anybody tells you. There are powerful general guidelines that we'll talk about, but decisions are based on who you are against at that particular moment. The way you play poker depends mostly on two things. The ante structure is very important because the amount of money that's in the pot, those antes and those blinds, they got to be measured against the amount of money in front of you. In No Limit, the higher percentage of your stack that's ante, the more liberal you got to play. A lower percentage would mean that you can be more selective. The other main thing is who you're playing against. The way the other player play dictates the way you must play. If there are wild, loose players who bet and call consistently, you're forced to play ABC poker, which means seldom bluffing or using deceptive tactics. There's no use to try to bluff a player who's almost certainly going to call you. Instead of taking chances, you just wait for the quality hands and then you punish your opponent the maximum. On the other hand, if the table is playing passively and very conservatively, then's the time to start betting and bluffing more. Always keep in mind how much money is in the pot when formulating a plan of attack. A third category of players found commonly among the higher limits are pros and accomplished amateurs. Now it becomes a mind game between you and the better players. Always try to get inside your opponent's head and play against him based on what you think that he's feeling at that moment. I personally like to compete against these players because it's so much more challenging. You can bring your entire arsenal of weapons into play and the stronger will person will usually win. So stay very focused. If you can't understand that poker is about people and not just the cards that you hold, you'll have a tough time ever winning. Not only will you have a tough time winning, I think it's impossible for you to win. It is. I'm, I'm convinced that the, the top poker players would make great psychologists. Doyle Brunson said it best way back when, I think 1978 in Super System, when he said, don't bluff a sucker. Explain that to us. You mean back when the meter hit the earth yeah, to way, kill way, the way, way, ba <laughs> way back when we were young'uns. Well, I mean, that is true. It's, uh, you know, why bluff at somebody that's going to call you? One of my best friends was Sailor Roberts, uh, who's passed away now. And he was one of the greatest players I ever saw. But he had a lot of bad habits, so I staked him a lot of times. And I had him staked in the World Series of Poker one time. And there was an old farmer from Nebraska. Uh, his name was Milo Jacobson. And this guy would just call everything. And Sailor kept bluffing at him, bluffing at him. And I, <laughs> I'll never forget how angry I got at Sailor because Milo <laughs> finally called all of his money and broke Sailor. And ever since then, I've been very adamant that anybody that I've had anything to do with in poker games is not to bluff at people that are going to call you. Uh, there's a TV show called High Stakes Poker that I've played on a lot. Yeah. And I think I've played on it 12 times. I've won 12 times. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's simply because I don't try to be fancy on it. I sit down, I try to win. These guys come in, they try to bluff. and like back to the fancy yeah, play syndrome right. again. And uh, it's a pleasure to play with them. <laughs> <laughs> pleasure in the most profitable yeah. way. There's so many things that you gotta think about when you think about playing the hand. Many players go through their whole poker careers without realizing how many things there are to consider when making a poker decision. You won't have time to think about all these factors, every hand, but here's an important tip. 
when a decision seems borderline and you can't decide rather than just hit your head against a wall trying to re-examine what you've already considered, evaluate other things. Simply, when you're in doubt about what to do, consider more factors. All these factors contribute to your quality decisions at poker. The cards you hold, what opponents are likely to hold, what opponents are unlikely to hold, your position, the position of the player who initiated the action, how many players were dealt in, how many players are active now, pot odds, implied odds, your image, the cards on the board in Hold'em in Omaha, your opponent's exposed cards in Seven Stud, the chances you will improve your hand, the chances opponents will improve their hands. Previously exposed cards that have been folded in Seven Stud, the previous sequence of betting, the playing styles of opponents, opponents' states of mind right now, who's bluffable, who's likely to bluff, who made the last bet or raise on a previous round, whether active players entered in a blind position including you, that's for Hold'em in Omaha, whether thinning the field will help or hurt. Is anyone all in? Is anyone likely to be forced all in? Who's the most likely to bet if you check? Who will act after you? Can you trap opponents into betting for you? and much more. And especially if it's no limit, add these. What's the best size for a bet? Are the aggressive opponents sitting before you or after you? Are the timid opponents sitting before you or after you? Are you getting attractive odds for your call right now? If you call now, how likely are you to be able to call future bets? The size of your stacks. The size of your opponent's stacks. And more. Here's the whole list of factors again. And it's not complete either. There are literally hundreds of things you might consider. And if it's a tournament, be sure to consider whether you or your opponents can rebuy. How late is it in the tournament? Whether your table will break soon. The strength of the field. The strength of the players at your table the number of players left in the tournament, the number of players at your table, how far you are away from reaching the money, how big your stack is relative to the size of the blinds or antes, who has the biggest stacks at your table, who can be forced all in at your table. Whether you're in danger of being blinded out.
when the stakes will be increased, what the stakes will be at the next level, and more. Once more, here's the entire but partial list of factors one last time. Just remember, you won't have time to evaluate all these factors every time. But when the first things you focus on don't lead to a clear decision, evaluate more factors. I'm the mad genius of...